this summer in Atlanta, the greatest spectacle in sports, the Olympic Games, return to America on NBC. It's still unthinkable, isn't it? Destiny had a date with the Chicago Bulls, but now it flirts with the Seattle Sonics. Now the Bulls' place alongside NBA legends doesn't seem like such a burning question. The only thing burning is the Bulls' 3-0 lead, suddenly down to 3-2. This is now where the NBA Finals will be decided. The Chicago Bulls are back home, not with the title, but instead with unfinished business. Game six, next. This is the NBA on NBC. The 1996 NBA Finals. their home floor this year. The Chicago Bulls are 48 and 2. Despite that, and despite the fact that they still have the clear upper hand in this series, there is for the first time a bit of uncertainty surrounding this team as they come home for game 6. Hi everybody and happy Father's Day. I'm Bob Costas. That uncertainty surrounding the Chicago Bulls stems not just from the two straight defeats in Seattle. Only the second time this season the Bulls have lost consecutive games. Those games are over, but some of the Bulls' problems may not be. Ron Harper, very effective in the first two games here in Chicago, was virtually a spectator in Seattle because of an ailing knee that will require surgery at season's end. With knee and especially ankle ailments, Scottie Pippen can't explode to the basket. So the defense lays back and dares him to hit from the outside. So far, he hasn't, shooting under 33% and just 6 for 32 from three-point range. Steve Kerr is healthy, but his jump shot isn't. Usually he thrives on the open shots created by the double teams on Michael Jordan. But in this series, he's been miserable from downtown. Three for 20 from outside the arc. Tony Kukoc excelled early against Seattle, but in game five, he couldn't pick up much of the slack, shooting just five of 13. All of this leaves Seattle, an excellent defensive team to begin with, double and triple teaming Jordan with near impunity. In the fourth quarter of game five, the time Jordan usually takes over, he managed just two points. Keep in mind that Harper's absence means Jordan spends considerable stretches guarding Gary Payton, another drain on Jordan's energies as the Bulls, the league's oldest team, play their 100th game of the season tonight. As for Seattle, right now, Sean Kemp could be the series MVP. Gary Payton has come alive the last couple of games. And now that he's starting, Frank Rakowski has at least somewhat contained Dennis Rodman. Overall, the Sonics seem the fresher team late in game five. A step quicker in every respect. And now here comes game six on a quick turnaround less than 48 hours later. And so this series has taken on an entirely different tone as we return to Chicago, where talk of the Bulls' place in history has given way to the simple desire to see them finish this thing tonight before it really gets scary. Because if they don't, if the Sonics force a Game 7, Seattle will be the team on the verge of history. No team has ever recovered from an 0-3 deficit to win any kind of NBA playoff series, let alone the finals. And if Seattle can somehow do that, 
they will have staged simultaneously one of the greatest comebacks and one of the greatest upsets in the history of sports. So, is tonight the night Chicago celebrates? Or does Seattle push them to the brink? Tip-off just 10 minutes away, back at the United Center, right after this. They're already roaring at the United Center, and tonight the Bulls need the crowd more than at any time this season to help reverse the momentum and lift them over the injuries and the fatigue. The guys who will call Game 6 over the din are Marv Albert, Matt Gukas, and Bill Walton. Go to it, Marvelous. All right, thank you, Bob. And the way things were going over the first three games of this series, we did not expect to be standing back here courtside of the United Center discussing key points for game number six. Matt, first of all, where has it all gone wrong for Michael Jordan and the Bulls? Well, Michael cannot carry the whole offensive load. Everybody has to contribute, in particular, Scotty Pippen. Now, he has been heading in the wrong direction with his shot, much of it due to his very injuries and that 33 percent puts even more pressure on everybody else but here's how scotty pippen can be effective he has a height advantage in most cases and that these are high scoring percentage chances that need to be exploited but overall chicago needs to regain their confidence and this home court should make a world of difference all right and bill as for seattle sean kemp has been just terrific right throughout the series but the changes for the sonics really involve the upgrade and play of other people on the club aside from sean kemp barb it's been a complete and remarkable turnaround for seattle the last time out chicago threw everything in their legendary arsenal at seattle and seattle just spit it back and said hey if that's all you've got we can win this thing and nowhere has it has the turnaround been more evident than the play of gary payton who's outplayed michael jordan the last two games and george call will rue the early decision to hide and protect Peyton from the king the role players though for seattle have contributed mightily detlef shrimp he's picked his spots and he's been very big in the decisive run of game five nate mcmillan back in the rotation from injury while well, he's been on the floor the last two games the sonics have outscored chicago by 34 points and hershey hawkins his scoring is up by seven points per game in the two victories now seattle has youth health and momentum on their side they'll play very well tonight the questions though for the bulls they staggered home they can't think they're just going to walk in here and hold on to a victory they've got to go get it all the pressure marb it's on the bulls and their fans all right so coming up it is game six of the nba finals can the sonics make it three straight over the bulls can the bulls regroup and wrap it tonight we'll be back with the starting lineups in a moment usual capacity crowd better than 21,000 at the United Center and they are trying to rev themselves to provide the kind of atmosphere that the Sonics received the key arena in Seattle. We're set for the introduction of the starting lineups. Here's the public address voice of the Bulls, Ray Clay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a happy Father's Day to dance all around the world. The Chicago Bulls welcome the world's greatest fans to the United Center. Tonight, Game 6 of the NBA Finals is between the Seattle Supersonics and your Chicago Bulls. Now let's meet tonight's starting lineup. 
player in the Chicago scheme. Hopper makes his return to the starting line of play in only one minute in game five. For more on the Bulls and the Sonics, let's check it on the sidelines with Ahmad Rashad and Hannah Storm. First to Ahmad. Thanks, Mark. The last couple of games I've reported from the Chicago locker room that they have been quiet, cautious, and even a worry. Now, Michael Jordan told me that while they were in Seattle, as a team, they lost their confidence. But now that they're back home, it should return. Now, Randy Brown had a different take on it. He said, you know, while we were out in Seattle, everybody talked about what a great team we were, maybe the greatest team of all time. But while we didn't buy into that, maybe we thought about it subconsciously. And while we were thinking about it, Seattle was kicking our butts. Now that we're home, that's not going to happen. For the Seattle side of it, let's go down to Hannah. Thanks, Ahmad. Well, arguably the best player in these finals through the first five games has been Sean Kemp, but he suffered a painful bruised sternum in game one. He told me that will not affect his play today. His mobility is fine, even though he is sore, and he'll wear a protective padding on his chest and underneath his jersey. Meanwhile, what they're counting on for the Sonics is the Bulls to be the ones who are fatigued and who are injured. George Carl is planning an up-tempo game. He wants to wear the Bulls down, he says, even if he has to reach way down in his bench and play guys like Vincent Askew and Irvin Johnson, who haven't seen action in the last 10 quarters. Mark? Thank you, Hannah. The officials, Hugh Evans, Dick Pavetta, Steve Javi, the crew that works in game three. Well, of course, the presence of Ron Harper means that Michael Jordan now does not have to work as hard in defending Gary Payton. Also, the Bulls want to keep Rodman on camp as much as possible. Nevertheless, Chicago has to start forcing turnovers again and get some fast break passes. Seattle, good start. Fight the crowd. Get him back. 25 shots for Sean Kemp. And run, run, run. Take advantage of conditioning. And this crowd much livelier than we saw in games one and two here in Chicago. The opening tip controlled by the Bulls. The crowd actually trying to get itself into it during the playing and singing of the national anthem. They began the chant early on during the singing of the anthem. Here is Harper blocked by Payton. Shot clock at seven. We are just underway in game six. Pippen to the front. You did not see that in game five. Well, one of the reasons Scotty's been struggling with his shot against the ball many times with the shot clock winding down. This time he didn't settle for jumper. Took it hard to the hole. Gary Payton met by Scotty Pippen. Open shot for Pippen. Shrimp. And the game is tied at two. Terrific ball movement. Krakowski, he wants to take that shot. Shrimp, obviously a better shooter, but Chris can hit that play. Luke Longley playing with a sore lower back. Dennis Rodman, very quiet in five in Seattle. Michael Jordan. Oh, he knew on the release. He began, began the walk back down court. Two series, two touches for Jordan in the same spot on the floor. Long Kemp not able to hit on his first opportunity. The Bulls with a 5-2 lead. Jordan had missed his previous six from three-point range. Bennett and a half gone by. Kemp had it poked away by Rodman. As we mentioned, Scotty Pippen getting the ball with the shot clock winding down. There's seven seconds on the shot clock. Michael decides not to drive it, see what he's got with the jump shot first, as the Chicago bench glad to see Michael get off so well. And here's Kemp from deep. Ron Hopper playing with the band back. Played only one minute in game number five. Has seen very little action since game two. Pippen putting moves. Kemp slicing his way and back up the Sonics. Three on two developing, but the Bulls get back. Rutkowski blows the stop. He thought it was foul. They're going to let this one go a lot, Marv. Rutkowski's got to finish that play. That was last touch by the Sonics. For the last two games, Frank Rakowski has played 33 minutes, has not scored a point, has four rebounds, but yet he's been effective for this team because he is spreading the floor. He can't believe a foul wasn't called there on the play before. Scotty Pippen thought he got in. Long way. Nice pass for Rodman. Here's Hershey Hawkins. Lost it from behind, and we are seeing a different 
different Scotty Pippen here at the start. He's come out of Curry. Ron Hoffer giving the Bulls a 7-2 lead. And they are standing and cheering here at the United Center. Pressure from Chicago. Sonics able to get it down. Percy Hawkins. Percy Hawkins, as Michael Jordan described, has been very scrappy, very aggressive. He's played very well the last two games. Jordan lost it. He thought he was fouled. Four on three for Seattle. Kemp. And the Bulls were looking for a charge. Did not get the call as Kemp is able to tip it home. Well, in the other games of this series and throughout all the playoffs, we have heard so many whistles. The officials look like they're going to let them play. If they do this, however, they got to let them go all game this way. The Bulls seven and the Sonics six. And now a whistle away from the ball as Steve Javi indicates a foul on Murkowski. This is what championship basketball is all about. Let the players decide this. Rodman with another flop. Sean Kemp just stays with it. Sean Kemp again very active. The difference for Chicago, they're taking the ball to the basket. They're not settling for the perimeter game. And yeah, that's what Jordan attempts to do and was fouled. He was hacked. Percy Hawkins called for his first. Well, they, the players have it in their minds. They want to be aggressive. They want to take the ball to the basket as much as possible, but they're going to start to, to get some second thoughts. If they're going to go to the hole and not get the whistles when they get fouled, well, they're going to start thinking about maybe just relying with that jump shot. Well, Michael with his fourth point. Jordan, 11 of 22, 26 points the other night in Seattle. The rest of the Bulls, just 18 of, of 55, but it was a very quiet 11 of 22. Michaels shut down in the fourth quarter. Did not have a field goal the last nine and a half minutes and looked tired in the second half. For that long week on the road in the 2-3-2 two, two format at the very end of the season, very debilitating for the team like Chicago on the road. And he had to chase Gary Payton around at the uh, at the other end of the floor. Off the steal. And taken back by Payton. Payton for Kemp. And a blocking foul against Chicago. Well, Chicago has had a number of situations in the early going here where they have been a little bit careless with the handle. A couple of catches by Luke Lawley. That time, Scotty Pippen not making sure he had the ball before he went down court and gave up the ball. And Scotty felt he was in good position to take that charge. I think he was too far underneath the basket. Good call. What's a first-team all-league defensive player like Scotty Pippen doing taking charges anyway? That's for guys who have no game. When you can play basketball, you are a defender. You're not a guy that just gets run over and bailed out by the ref. And Pippen picked up his first foul. Matt, did you have something I, to I, say? I, 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 I'm stumped. I don't know. I thought that You're was a part, of, a part of good defense, taking charges. No way Scotty Pippen could block that. And Luke Wadley could not handle the lead. Hopper says his fault. Bulls 9, Sonics 8, with 7.40 remaining in this opening quarter. Marv Albert with Matt Dukas and Bill Walton. Ivor Shot had a score working the sidelines. Peyton, yes. And the Sonics with a one-point lead. Hannah was talking about play the full 48. Seattle does not think that Chicago can do that. The poise, the confidence, the determination evident for the Sonics today. Scotty Pippen. Only 3 of 24 from downtown the last three games. And the Bulls are horrible. 3 of 26 in game five on Friday night. In fact, at one point, they missed 20 straight three-pointers. Shrimp, yes. And the game is tied at 12. Bulls have hit their first two three-point attempts. Jordan and now Pippen. Scotty Pippen, who's playing hurt the bad ankles and bad back. Sore knee has had a very difficult series. His uh, shot quarter, wrongly from way out. The tip, that's good. 
convert. The poor spacing by Chicago with Jordan being fronted in the post. Luke Longley has to get up above the tip of the circle to get Prakowski out of there. That's why they cannot throw that lob to Michael. Balls with a 14-12 lead. Here's the double on Kemp. Rodman over to help. Kemp in trouble. Hawkins able to save it. One of the travel. Shot clock is at three. Seattle is not taking care of their defensive boards. And the fact that Sean Kemp is off to a very slow start is hurting the Sonics. And the Bulls are firing from the three-point range. Shrimp for three. Way off. Well, everybody just launching the first shot that shows up, trying, I think, to get whatever jitters there might be, and there shouldn't be at this juncture, just to shoot jump shot. Timeout is taken with 5.33 remaining in the first quarter. The Bulls with a 14-12 lead on the Sonics. Scotty Pippen in a discussion with Hugh Evans. Here's the uh, three points. Shot by Scotty Pippen to end his drought in that department and watch the work off the offensive boards. First Jordan, he goes wide of the mark and Rodman puts it home. So the Bulls feeling better about things in this first quarter. They lead by two. Seattle Sonics, it's been an unlikely dramatic turnaround winning the last three games. So what is their approach tonight? We asked that of Coach George Carl. At times this year, we have been overly happy with success, and you know, if we come out happy tonight and not angry, you know, Chicago embarrasses. us. But there is a there's a lot of class in what we did. I think there's a moment of pride that's got to come with that. But but I think I think my team is going to be very serious tonight. I think they're going to play their best basketball game in Chicago. We're going to make the whole theme since Game Three is make Chicago earn Game Four, win four, and. Uh, I think we'll do that. And you can see it on the faces of guys like Shrimp and Brakowski. It's always there in Sean Kemp's eyes. Shot clock is run down. It's at one. Pippen just did. Beat the 24. And it's the Bulls by four. Scotty Pippen off to the fast start. Three of five. He has seven points and looking very active, particularly on the defensive end. It's remarkable how well he's playing. Those injuries don't get better in two days. Oh, Murkowski way off. He's been looking for the three. He has not taken the shots the last couple of games, but feels he can hit from downtown. Kemp broke it up. So Sean Kemp with the steal. And Luke Hawley continues to have problems catching and holding on to the basketball. The Sonics give it right back. Shrimp to the ball. That led Shrimp for Gary Payton, met by Scotty Pippen. Yes, Gary Payton with the touch. He's hit his first two. The ball 16, the Sonics 14. That's a beautiful move by Payton. He made Scotty Pippen think he was going to spin and drive, and it froze Pippen. It's not just individual basketball. Nice pick and roll initiated by the ball handler. And a strong move for the basket. By Longley, that's his first field goal. For the Bulls, in losing the two in Seattle, it's their first back-to-back -back defeat since last February when they lost it in Denver and in Phoenix. Here's Peyton again off the spin. What a move by Peyton, and the Bulls again lead by two. The Bulls have not lost three straight since January of 1995. They lost four in a row during that stretch, but Michael Jordan was in the midst of his retirement. by Peyton. It is his first foul, so Jordan will go to the line. Overall, the Chicago Bulls at home have been magnificent, as you'd expect, in recent years. The last time that they lost two in a row here uh, in Chicago was January of, of 95. Jordan has, has six points, one of four rebounds and two assists. The last time they, they lost two in a row at home with uh, Jordan 
February of 93, Matt, when you were a child. <laughs> and the old building across the street, which is now a parking lot. And you remember all the complaining last season about the new United Center, how the Bulls could not get used to the crowd atmosphere, to the floor, to the baskets, to where the fence was. Everything was wrong with it until Michael Jordan returned. There's nothing wrong with Seattle's offense. That's fine. It's their defense. They're not pushing Chicago to the perimeter. They're not taking care of their defensive forward. Bulls lead by four as we come up on three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Nate McMillan. First time crowd one of the travel on McMillan. Sam Perkins also on the floor for the first time. And it's a 24-second violation indicated, but... <laughs> Looked like that previous shot hit the rim. <laughs> yes, I hope that did. I hope that's not just me that saw that hit the rim. Oh, this shot thrown up by Nate McMillan clearly will clang off this rim. Well, it's close, Bill. Very close. The question is whether it did hit the rim because then the uh, shot clock is reset. And uh, after the officials discuss it, they say, yes, it did. Here's a look from a, uh, another angle, and uh, it did clearly. It did. Yes, I, I did read down one or two shots <laughs> in my life. That doesn't mean anything about your sight from this distance. <laughs> well, but that's how you get rebounds, by looking at the ball. That's one thing Luke Longley does not do very well. And a foul is called a pushing foul on Rodman. It's his first. And Dennis Rodman slaps the ball out of the hands of Sean Kemp. And right away, George Carl, right into the face of the officials, complaining about it. Well, all series long, Sean Kemp has been so strong, so quick in his low post moves, getting in there and drawing that personal foul. But these are the antics of Dennis Rodman that bring even more attention to himself and alert the referees. Just like that, you see Steve Javi watching him, George Carl complaining. These are the moves Dennis Rodman just has to stay away from. Well, Michael Jordan telling us uh, prior to the game that he hopes... And he's talked to Dennis about calming down because it just brings more attention not only to Rodman, but to their teammates in terms of the officials checking them much closer. Well, it worked early in the season. He got under Seattle's skin, but Seattle has moved beyond that. They've got experience now. And now it's isn't big picture time. This is the championship being decided right now. Tony Kukoc has come on for the first time. The Bulls obviously would prefer having Kukoc come off the bench. Jordan for Longley. It's just remarkable how he can make decisions in the air, Jordan. Kemp rejected. Jordan will be isolated against Sean Kemp. He just gets right to the hoop. Sean closes out on him, and then Jordan pulls the ball back, and Sam Perkins breaks down defensively. Sonics have missed their last four shots. Shot clock is down to five. Kemp has to fire it up, and hits. Put on the line, a two-pointer, six for Kemp, and the Bulls now lead by four. Sean Kemp playing with the great passion, challenged his teammates after the loss in game three, did not like their attitude. That's been a, a big factor. Hawkins on the shot that came up short. Nate McMillan, who's provided a lift despite the fact that he has been playing hurt. McMillan working against Kukos. Now Perkins posting up. Open shot for McMillan. And back comes short. Last touch by Kuko. Seattle is not doing a good job on their defensive board, but Sean Kemp, they threat. They threaten inside, and then Sean Kemp, that's his sixth shot of the game. He's got a couple free throws. Sonics playing terrific basketball. Timeout is taken by the Bulls. We'll be right back. Well, Nate McMillan has had his injury problems and has really not been able to help the Sonics until the last two games. And did he ever help? But here in a collision with Tony Kukoc and Nate McMillan shaken up on the play as he got the hip check inadvertently from Tony Kukoc. You can just see the caution that Nate is forced to play with because of that herniated disc. This great champion of a person and a terrific player is one chance. 
and his body lets him down. And McMillan able to hang in, remains on the floor. David Wingate has come on for the first time for Seattle. Steve Kerr in for Chicago. We come to one left. In the first quarter, illegal defense called for the first time. So that is the warning against the Bulls. Ron Hopper starting the game after playing only one minute in game five in Seattle and has played well in this first quarter. Here's Dennis Rotten for Luke Longley. Here's it from the crowd. Four points for Longley. Far, Ron Harper is moving so much better. He was so tentative back in Seattle. Perkins has to have a big game for Seattle. He has not been aggressive in his early moments. McMillan. Not beating Kukos. Crowd looking for a travel. Harper able to dive for it. Sonics on the run. Kuke gives it back a bad pass. And on the scramble, Rodman had it knocked away. Last touch by Seattle. That's a terrific defensive recovery by Ron Harper. And those are the kinds of plays he has made for Chicago all season long and in the early going into the playoffs. But Tony Kukoc posting up the smaller Peyton inside. No fadeaway jumpers. Take the ball strong in the hole. Seattle does a terrible job of getting the ball to a guard on the fast break. Get the ball to Peyton. Get the ball to Ridley. by Tony Kukos. Final seconds of the quarter. Perkins for three. And that's it for this opening quarter in Chicago. Standing ovation for the ball. After one, the Bulls 24. And the Sonics 18. Chicago trying to turn it. To the four performances in Seattle the last two games. The Sonics hoping to bring it to a seventh and final game here on Wednesday night. You are watching the NBA on NBC. The 1996 NBA Finals. Welcome back to the United Center in Chicago and a happy Father's Day for all of us here at NBC Sports as we head to the second quarter. No team in NBA history has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit to give you a broader perspective. Major League Baseball, no one has done it. National Hockey League, two teams have done it. The 42 Toronto Maple Leafs, the 75 New York Islanders. And no team has ever come back from a three games to two deficit of the NBA with two wins on the road. Let's check in with Hannah Storm. Hannah? Marv, Nate McMillan has been bothered on that left leg by pressure on the sciatic nerve. He's had a lot of pain in the back of the leg, but this most recent injury was a knee on the side of the leg. They iced it during that timeout. It shouldn't have any impact on the injury that he has struggled with uh, throughout these playoffs. Let's send it over to Ahmad. All right, thanks, Hannah. I just talked with Chip Schaefer, the uh, Wolves trainer. He told me the ice they're putting on Ron Harper is a preventative sort of medicine. What it does, it gives it an analgesic effect that numbs the knee and keeps the pain away. Marv? All right, thanks, Ahmad. Opening minute, second quarter. And the Bulls with a 24-18 lead on the Sonics. Well, Chicago has to be very happy with their defense in the first quarter, holding the Sonics to just 18 points. And I don't know why Seattle doesn't go to more pick and rolls. Chicago has had a lot of trouble defending it. Gary Payton just missed a wide open play of every burn Jordan from the perimeter. And here's Jordan getting inside, and he was fouled. Wingate for David Wingate, his first, and Michael Jordan to the line. He's four of four at the line. And again, the intelligence of the Bulls, they know that when Michael has this feeling on championship night, when he's got a small defender, give him some room to get to the hoop. He can just overpower the outsized Wingate. Eight points for Jordan, although he is only one of five from the field. You know, you think back to uh, after Game 3, several Sonics, including Gary Payton, basically giving their concession speeches. 
Rodman is fouled. And he'll go to the line. You have the feeling that the Sonics felt that the series was all over. They appear to be giving up except for Sean Kemp, who uh, made those bold statements, and here they are right back into it, although the Bulls are playing very well in this first half, and Dennis Rodman hearing it from the crowd after uh, drawing the foul. It's called on Kemp, who sits down. Well, you just can't assume that Michael Jordan is going to miss free throws just because he's a good foul shooter, but how can you not box out Dennis Rodman in a free throw situation? He, he makes a living doing that. Matt, Seattle's a poor defensive rebounding team. They don't have the big guy Rodman horrible at the line. Remember, it was in game two. Seattle had a chance to go for the victory. Scotty Pippen continues to play perfect basketball. Chicago continues. They've got 10 baskets and 8 assists and the people in Chicago are ecstatic. Well, this crowd has been into it right from the start, looking to provide a lift for the Bulls. Very quiet crowd in games 1 and 2. Chicago with an 18-8 run the last 7 minutes. Perkins coming up short. And it was last touched by the Bulls. Marv Sam Perkins looks really off tonight. This is the guy who has to have a big game. He had a wide open dunk there and just not moving well at all. Perkins has missed his first three shots. Seattle bench 0 for 6 here at the start. Now Perkins is it back. Trump for three. Yes! Then left Trent from downtown. He has seven points, and the Bulls now lead by six. Poor decision by Tony Kukoc to come doubled as he ran back to the other end. Phil Jackson let him know about it. Rodman had Perkins under control, too far away from the basket. Double team not necessary. And Rodman took a poke in the head from Trent. For that left his first. And a new 24 for the Bulls. Here's another look at it. Rodman in the triple post. Detlef feels he can get a play from behind. Uh, Rodman always has to have the last word. Jordan with a series of fakes. Had to give it back. And a travel on Steve Kerr. The Bulls were called for seven traveling violations in game five in Seattle. And I talked to Phil Jackson before the game. I said, of the seven, Phil, how many really were? He said, one. Actually, on that particular play, Michael Jordan got away with a walk to escape the defense of Wingate. When does Phil Jackson start complaining about the rap? Seattle hammered him in game five. Of course, that's always a uh, coach's point of view in terms of, well, sure. one out of seven. Well, the first is the refs. Then it's the timekeeper, then it's the announcers next. Who knows? <laughs> well, he wasn't complaining about the referees. He was just answering my question. <laughs> he was complaining about you. <laughs> Who goes off the steal? Kerr facing the double team. We are early second quarter. And the Bulls lead 27-21. Bulls lead 29-21. Jordan rode Kerr, the last turnover. He went right back to him with the pass. That's what great teammates do. They lead their guys to beautiful performances. Hawkins. Percy Hawkins with the floater. His second field goal. He has four. And the Bulls now lead by six points. 
Bill Jackson with Rodman to coach Jordan Hall. Beautiful pass. Rodman. Well, Dennis getting credit for the extra rebound. That's the second time that has occurred. Like Moses Malone basketball. But Ch Chicago's getting to the hoop. They did not do that out in Seattle. What day hits from downtown. And now it's it's changed to a two. Hit the foot on the line. 31, 25 to score. And a blocking foul called on Wingate. Well, Michael Jordan drawing the attention of the defense, getting up in the air, finding Kerr wide open, and the crowd, you could feel it in their in the tone. They wanted Steve to make that, and he really put a beautiful arc on that shot to get the first one, and Michael is so in tune any time around the basket, feeling the defense, finding the open man, and Scottie Pippen appreciates that kind of basketball. Long way back out the floor. setting up on Perkins and it's a traveling violation Luke has been playing very very well he's another one of the Bulls who's going to have off-season surgery he's got to have some bone spurs taken off those ankles he will not play in the Olympics for Australia his native country this summer and Luke also bothered by a sore back in recent days six point Chicago lead four minutes in second quarter overplay Harper call for the foul. Well, the Bulls have made a concerted effort anytime a smaller man is playing a bigger man in the post to get around and front and put pressure not only on the passer, but make that a tough pass, and it has gotten the Bulls more aggressive defensively. Hey, Chicago is playing very well. Seattle is not playing their type of basketball yet, and they look at that, up at that scoreboard and find themselves only trailing by six. And if they would just feed the post Seattle, if Seattle would get that ball even better, they float passes, they hang them out, you gotta zip it in there hard to the guy. And that's Rick pulling out of play. And it led to the offensive foul, illegal pick, set by Kemp trying to free up the man with the ball, Shrepp. It looked like Sean Kemp was stationary, but when he leaned over, when he put that shoulder down, if he had stood his ground upright, that would have been a foul on Rodgers. Here's Jordan. Well, would have been a two-pointer. Put on the line, so Michael is now two of seven from the field. The guards are running away from the ball in the backcourt for Seattle. Nice. that pass you wanted, Bill, as Rodman, he was buried in the lane there, had to try to get around in front, but way too late, as Kemp did a beautiful job of holding him off, perfect pass. Bulls 31, Sonics 27. Jordan Grace on the double team, finding Pippen. Rodman, trying to draw contact, no call, but Longley got it to Jordan. Here's Jordan! able to elevate Bulls lead 33-27. Smart defensive rebound. It's killing Seattle. They can't dig that ball out. John Kemp once again from the outside. That's his fourth field goal. He has 10 points. So the Bulls lead by four. Bulls have led by as many as nine. Sonics briefly led by one. They were up 10-9 in the early going. Here's Jordan going to the series of fakes. Rebounded by Shrek. Oh, Michael is so quick right now. He had Hersey Hawkins whipped on the baseline. Hersey would have never found him, but Michael didn't realize how badly he had to be. Perkins working on Pippen and lost it. Hopper with Hawkins back. Now, Mike Hawkins and Hopper have the acceleration. Sam Perkins looks asleep. Many have said that, but that's not necessarily on the court. It's the look, though. <laughs> Well, the NBA and NBC Sports have teamed up and created the official website for the NBA Finals at Finals.com. Game previews and player bios and video highlights. The latest news on the Bulls and the Sonics. Plus, during our broadcast of the Finals, fans around the globe can interact with our very own cybercaster Steve Snapper Jones, who is online. Not to be confused, incidentally, with the Steve Jones who won the U.S. Open earlier uh, today. Steve was asked the other day, what is the most 
asked question that he has received, and this the answer. Did you get a fair deal trading courtside seats to Marvin Mapp for a seat upstairs away from Bill? I don't know about that one, guys. I don't know. Hey, Marv, I heard you were online the other day. Well, I, you know, and I told Bill, any time that he has a question, he can ask it directly. He does not have to go online. You know, feel free at any time, Bill. You don't want to give me that kind of freedom, Marvin. <laughs> you want to keep me on a, on a nice, on the nice tight leash that I'm on. Chicago with a 35-29 lead on Seattle. Halfway through the second quarter. Hawkins and Payton in the backcourt. Shrek with Kemp and Perkins up front. Here is Kemp. And Hawkins able to hustle it down. Shrek. Offer looks right back. And Jordan will reset. Hard for moving so much better. Obviously, the series of injections that he took during the course of this week seem to be working for this game today. Always a very dangerous proposition. Play by Perkins to bring another hit the rim. So they got the new 24. Interference. It's a volleyball game up there. Nobody going after the basketball in a green uniform. As Kukoc slowly hanging all over that rim. It's amazing. How can you expect to win the championship of the NBA when you can't get a defensive rebound each and every time the other team gets? And another Seattle turnover. They've been sloppy with the ball. It leads to Pippen. Chicago and coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, we'll hear live from Isaiah Thomas, Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Toronto Raptors. Isaiah and his Pistons won back-to-back -back titles in 1989 and 1990, and uh, they often tangle with Michael Jordan and the Bulls. We'll hear from Isaiah as he chats with Bob Costas on the Prudential Halftime Report. As we were going to break on that sonic timeout, double technicals were called on Peyton and Harper as they had words as they crossed pants in front of the official scorer's table. Ten-point lead for Chicago, their biggest lead of the night. We have 4.39 remaining in the first half. and pushing for their favorite bulls here. Just waves of waves of rampaging bulls out the glass. Harper throws it up. He knows somebody. That time it was Kukos. Pippen was right there. Pippen's defense has been spectacular today, Mario. Standing ovation for Ron Harper. Steve Kerr coming on for Harper, who is playing with an injured left knee. Kemp from Sam Perkins. It's 
The Bulls by 10. Chicago with nine steals in this first half. Four by Pippen. NBA record for the NBA Finals in a single game is seven by Robert Horry of Houston last year. Pippen already has four. Pippen keeps it alive as the Bulls get the new 24. Brown wanted Kukoc to pull the trigger. I tapped it to Jordan instead. Excellent call. <laughs> Shot clock at five. And a travel is called. Well, they were trying, but Michael Jordan really played beautifully by Gary Payton. Bumping from behind, getting around and fronting, and doing a terrific job as he has now the last two and a half games. Just unable to get the ball to him, and Michael Jordan upset about it. Shrepp, able to free himself up. Nine points for Shrepp. Balls lead 41 to 33 with two and a half to go in this first half. Eight rebounds, five off the offensive glass for Robin. You can see the domination by Chicago. Shrepp with a good play to knock it away from Jordan. Three on two. Fouled by Kerr. That last play, Michael lit up when Detlef Shrimp switched out on that was a replay of George Carl's faulty strategy from game one in this series. Led to a fast break opportunity and with good balance, with the guard in the middle and Shrimp running the wing, they got an easy trip to the foul line. So Detlef Shrimp to the line for the first time. Early of the season, Detlef out with a uh, fracture of the left tibula. Sat out 19 games. Took a while for him to make it back. His cutting and reactions were a bit off. Here's Dennis Rodman for Tony Kukoc. Kukoc, two of five. He has four points. The Chicago Bulls, nine at O at home in the playoffs, including victories over the Sonics in games one and two. During the regular season, they won 39 of 41. The Sonics did not want the Bulls celebrating on their floor, won the last two in Seattle, and now the Bulls are hoping to pull off the celebration here tonight. The Sonics looking to send it to a game seven here in Chicago on Wednesday. Seattle with six unanswered points. They are within six with just under two minutes to go. First hand. And again, the Bulls force the Sonics into a turnover. Pippen's defense is just spectacular tonight. He's everywhere. He doesn't get any credit that time, but he forced that turnover. So nice to see Scotty back on top of his game. Chicago has had a couple of unforced turnovers by Michael Jordan on the last couple of trips. They have to start handling the ball much, much better. Already 11 turnovers tonight. They had just 11 for the entire game on Friday. Nice ball movement. Slicing his way, kind of off the long way, but was called for a charging foul. Good call. Pippen in the lane. The defenders were in the air, which is fine. Scotty initiating this contact. Knocks over a bunch of players. Well, it is a good call, but the way this ball game started, everybody was flopping to the floor, falling down. Some of them were real charges. Some of them were imagined. But this is what confuses the players, the way the game starts out, the way it's officiated, and then it starts to change as you gradually move on. Very tough to figure out. Scotty Pippen was called for a second, taking a seat. Replaced by Tony Kukoc. Here's Cap on a double team. Loose, but could not hit. I think Sean's got to take shots like that, Marvin. He's got 11 shot attempts in the game. I think 25 for him has got to be his goal. Sometimes you got to force a little bit when you're the best player on your team. Nice lead pass. rejected by Kemp. What a play by Kemp. How often do we see that? And here's Kemp at the other end. Kemp is the one guy on this team that will block shots. He's not a real intimidating shot blocker, but when he gets his rhythm, 
he'll force Bill Jackson to take a timeout as he's led Seattle right back into this game. You know, we have just seen one of the great end-to-end -end sequences of this season. The show by Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp defending Dennis Rodman doesn't have to worry about him so much as an offensive player. You do have to worry about him on the offensive glass, but no way he can get it there as Sean Kemp made sure nothing doing for Michael Jordan. And then Sean Kemp, who's been shooting the jump shot really from the perimeter very well, and that tough little medium-range jumper. Nicely. You see the way Sean Kemp floated by Jordan and let Jordan sort of suckered him in, forced him to bring it behind his head, and then wiped it off with that left hand. Reminded me of Bill Russell a little bit. Well, Kemp with 14 points. He has sparked an 8-0 run for Seattle after the Bulls took a 12-point lead. And now Kemp sitting down with 40 seconds remaining in the half. The Bulls lead by four. Looked like they were about to pull away, leading by as many as 12. been shooting the ball very well throughout the series, not getting that many shots, however, as he has averaged 11 points a game, doing a terrific job in this ball game of when his man leaves him, finding that crease, finding that open area, and his teammates know where Beak Luke is and able to finish the play. And the difference in the post feeding by both teams. Chicago, the Tex winner, and Phil Jackson, the triple post offense. They know you got to tip that ball in. Oh, no, no, no. Going behind the back. <laughs> All right. Uh, red, redheads are very good at stuff. Yeah, I see. Here's Perkins. He continues to struggle with Shrimp on the rebound. Nobody oh, by, by six, and Perkins rejected. Perkins not able to hit, but a foul is called. Well, Matt, as you say, no one <laughs> defending Perkins. McMillan spotted him. But uh, Sam has had a very long first half. Well, so, no question he's having a tough time. But you don't leave him wide open underneath as miscommunication between Longley and Rodman leaving him wide open. But Sam still couldn't get the shot to go. I think they were testing Sam. I think they said, look, if we leave you wide open, can you score? I see. And he couldn't. <laughs> He is 0 for 5 from the field. Foul was called on Rockin. And Perkins now 0 for 1 at the line. Sam was celebrated his 35th birthday on Friday and was serenaded by the crowd after the game. Had the touch earlier in this series. Usually very good in clutch situations. And that's what's so surprising. I mean, this, this is the kind of game that Sam Perkins comes out and plays beautiful basketball and hitting the threes and rebounding, playing defense, and today it has just been nothing. So the Bulls lead by five. Final seconds of the half. Jordan. And he was tripped up. That won't count. Aaron Payton upset about that foul. His second. His second. And Seattle in the penalty, so Jordan will shoot two with four at nine tenth seconds remaining first half. Well, with the second quarter winding down, the Bulls going to their spread offense where they open the floor and will give it to Pippen, Kukoc, or Michael Jordan. I asked Phil Jackson before the game, come fourth quarter, if you're having trouble scoring in the triangle, will you open it up, give the ball to Michael Jordan at the top of the key? He said, we haven't used it much yet. We're ready to put it in. The Bulls 4 and 4, the Sonics 38. That's probably why Phil Jackson's coach of the year is, you know, call the play Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Chicago by 7. McBellin. And Brooklyn. That's the end of the first half. And the Bulls hearing it from this crowd. Halftime at the United Center in Chicago. And the Bulls lead the Sonics 45-38. We'll be back with Bob Costas and the Prudential Halftime Report right after these messages.
Packers as we head to the second half and the Bulls lead the Sonics 45 to 38. Matt, the Bulls appear to be very much back to their game after uh, the two poor performances in Seattle. Well, they're back to dominating the backboards and they're back to forcing turnovers. The problem is they're turning the ball over themselves, but good first halves from Luke Longley and Scotty Pippen to help out Michael Jordan, who's not shooting the ball particularly well, but getting to the free throw line. Now the Sonics still have not played well, but they're down by, by just seven. What do they have to do in the second half? More Seattle, they're not rebounding the ball. They're not getting anything from Perkins. But I want to go back to what Bob Costas was talking to Isaiah about. Gary Payton just not getting the job done. Jordan is outplaying him after Payton had the he had the edge out in Seattle. Gary Payton's got to get a lot more aggressive play like Isaiah. And how often have we heard George Carl say that Payton is at his very best when he's playing as he puts it crazy. A look at the halftime statistics, the Miller Lite halftime stats. Seattle 16 of 39, 41%. Chicago at 43% on 17 of 40. Uh, Jordan, as uh, Matt mentioned, not shooting well 3 of 11. He does have 14 points, doing it uh, at the line where he's 7 of 8. And the Bulls in the steals department with nine in the first half, led by Pippen, Scotty Pippen with four steals, and we have seen a very active Scotty Pippen, who had an outstanding first half, four of eight from the field, nine points, four steals, three rebounds. We'll be right back. Back in Chicago, Marv Albert, Matt Gukas, and Bill Walton. Mont Rashad had a storm on the sideline as we get ready for the start of play in the third quarter. The Bulls gunning for their fourth championship the last six years. The Sonics trying to stay alive for a seventh game here on Wednesday. Well, Michael Jordan, 3 of 11 tonight. And the rest of the team, 14 of, of 29. So the supporting cast has done it in the first half. While for the Sonics, Sean Kemp with 14 points on 6 of 12 and a terrific display once again in the first half. The rest of the Sonics 10 for 27 from the field. Seattle ball as we get started in the third quarter. Seven point Chicago lead. Rakowski up front with Kemp and Shrek in the backcourt. Payton. So Payton opens up by hitting the three. Inside out offense. Seattle needs that. Chicago hasn't had much of that. That's one of the reasons why they haven't been getting it done from behind the line. But you dump it inside, it sets everything out. Bulls lead 45 41. And a traveling violation on Pippen. 12th turnover for Chicago. The Seattle with 11 in the first half. And the half court, Seattle does have to go into Kemp, but only two fast break points in that first half for Seattle. I don't know if they can win a basketball game playing that way. And guys, that's the fourth travel on the Bulls. They were not happy with seven travels in game five on Friday. Here is Kemp. Spot, but could not convert. At least Kemp is still taking good shots. They open up with Peyton and Kemp handling the ball. Sonics in their transition defense. That wasn't even a fast break. It was a slow break. Shrek. Oh, he was playing tough by Pippen. Pippen's playing a solid all-around game. But when he gets shrimp, he should keep facing the basket. Use his quickness. Foot speed just blast right by them. Shrimp has 13 points. Got the step on Rakowski. Defensive rebounding again. You think of championship teams, you think of big guys snatching balls and firing out and passes. There's nothing. This is just layup after layup for Chicago. All started with the double team on Jordan. Big man chasing small men out on the floor. Here's Shrek. Jordan with the rebound. Bulls lead by seven. Two minutes, ten seconds gone by. Third quarter. Jordan for Longley. Yes. Penetration and dish. That's Michael Jordan's ultimate taking over of this league after Isaiah, after Magic, and after Larry Bird. Rakowski for three. Longley able to 
save that pass slightly off, but then threw it away. Gave it right back to the Sonics. That's that man for color blindness. Shot clock at 10. Shrimp went flying. Shot clock at 4. Oh, what a shot by Gary Payton. Well, after terrific defense for the part of the Ron Harper really stifling Gary Payton, forcing him to take that tough shot. Ron Harper will have to uh, take some time out to tie the shoelaces. I don't know how that was not a traveling violation on Payton. That still hits the three. Forget about the shoelaces. There you see it. Greg in the right foot. Ten point Chicago lead. Offensive foul is called. Percy Hawkins and Ron Harper's got to tie the shoes up. This is after he made the three. He just played with no shoelaces. Percy Hawkins called for the screen across foul on the move. Dennis Rodman flops once again. Again, here's the guy that doesn't flinch when Shaq thumps him. And Percy Hawkins is bigger than Marv comes out and sets hey, the screen. And hey, <laughs> that's four on Hawkins. Jordan heads to the line, foul on Payton, that's three on Payton. And a timeout taken by Seattle. Animated discussion between Dennis Rodman and, and Hugh Evans, who is being led away by teammates. 8.08 to go, third quarter, hits the Bulls by 10. Welcome you back to Chicago, where the Bulls with another spur. There's Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, one of the original owners of the Chicago Bulls, and now one of the Bulls' partners, Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam. He and Lamar will not be getting together <laughs> after the game. And Bill Murray, a native of Chicago. We talked with Bill earlier. He said that he always returns for ritual sacrifices. <laughs> on hand here at the United Center. Well, Michael still struggling from the field at 4 for 12, but like all the great scorers in the history of basketball, when they do not have their shot going, they find ways to score, and here it is, right at the free throw line. Michael going for his ninth and 10th free throw of the game. Four minutes gone by in the third quarter. The Bulls lead... By 12, this matches their biggest lead of the game. Aaron Payton is playing with three personal fouls. Hersey Hawkins has four. They're on the floor with Kemp, Shrimp, and Burkowski. Open shot for Shrimp. And left Shrimp with a solid ball game. Six of 11. He's now the high scorer for Seattle with 15. Seattle's hope here has to be on the fact that Chicago cannot play a full 48-minute game. The age, the injuries... But that crowd right now is so ready. Offer way off the board. Dennis Rodman, who's been quiet the last two games, has certainly had an impact here tonight. That's Hawkins working up. And here's Pippen leading the three on two as they spread the floor. Pippen for Rodman on the road. Dennis Rodman doing what he does best, work on the offensive glass, nobody gets a body on him, Frank Rakowski loses him, right on the doorstep, Dennis Rodman finishing one off, and then you get the rare three-on-two fast break that you don't normally see, you see three-on-ones, two-on-ones, and Michael Kerr, I should say Scotty Pippen making the nice play for Dennis Rodman. Matt, I think that Dennis Rodman works the crowd better than he works the offensive board. Well, he has the crowd going with nine points and ten rebounds. Shot clock at five. And away from the ball, the call against the Sonics as Rodman was taken down by Kemp. That's three on Kemp. 
Rodman and Kemp away from the ball. Kemp, the frustration. That was not a flop. He threw him to the ground. Sean, you cannot lose your poise here. That's Dennis Rodman trying to get into your head. You've been above that all series. Stay that way. And this is that little bit of a different tactic that the Sionics have not seen in the last few games. Running the big man inside and the Seattle not handling it very well at all. The Bulls have a 15-point lead. for a dad who has led his balls to a 64 47 lead with 625 remaining in the third Jordan with the steal Jordan picks the move on McMillan Hopper and Peyton able to bring it up Well, this is the situation that Gary Payton loves best when Nate McMillan comes into the ballgame. Now Gary doesn't have the responsibility of handling. He can play off the ball, and it's usually a good situation for Seattle. But the way Ron Harper is defending right now is outstanding. Yeah, but Han has been telling us that Nate McMillan's so frustrated with his teammates' lack of performance. Seattle better get on their game, or this celebration is going to start momentarily. Jordan with the air ball. Third quarter, now seven of ten from the field. Oh, Rodman broke up that pass from Payton. What is Gary Payton doing? Rodman blocked that with his face. <laughs> and uh, Payton and Rodman in a conversation. Rodman posting up on Payton. Also going to go to Rodman down low. Now Longley with one on the shot clock. 24 second violation. Would have been done call, but the Sonics came up with a steal. Perkins with three. Oh, didn't get anything. Nate McMillan cannot even move out here, Marvin. It's beyond an emotional lift. You're only going to get that at home. they got to get somebody who can play in there. He's physically healthy. See the ball, 7 of 10 for the 19 points and a 19-9 in the third. Pippen claiming that he was fouled. Payton for Perkins. Sam Perkins with his first field goal. He missed his previous seven. And the Bulls call for time. 4.48 remaining. In the third, it's the Bulls with a 15-point lead. where the Bulls lead the Sonics by 15. Seattle's inspirational leader, Nate McMillan, sobbing during that timeout, tears of both frustration and pain. Team doctor tells me that he did re-aggravate his back injury late in the first half. He was wearing a back brace just prior to his trying to enter the game for a few minutes and in obvious pain, and they're not sure if he will be able to play again today. Mark? Thank you, Hannah. 4.48 remaining third quarter, and the Bulls lead by 15 points. You feel so bad for Nate Mark. I dreamed my whole life of playing against Abdul Jabbar in the NBA Finals. I finally got that chance, and I had a broken foot at the time, and it just ruined my life. Of course, until they let me carry your bag. I was going to say, but it's been turned around the last couple of years now, with your now that NBC me, Association. Now that, they, now that they let me carry your room service and uh, make your dinner reservations, it's a lot better. Pippen checking the shot clock. Down to three. Hopper for three. And a loose ball foul. 
I really haven't noticed the Sonics defense picking up that much, but in the last three possessions for Chicago, very tentative. They had a couple of fast break opportunities that they didn't take. The Sonics want to get this thing to 10 points before this third quarter's over. Loose pass, Peyton finding Perkins, and it's a 13-point Chicago lane. And the crowd trying to rub up the balls once again. Good sign that Perkins is coming to life, but Sean Kemp's only taken one shot this half. Nice goal by Kemp. And here comes Peyton with Jordan back. Now right there, Peyton, you just go right at Jordan. You're only going to win if you attack with your strength. Fires the three. He has 14 points, and the Sonics are down by 10. Jordan has not had a good shooting performance, but he has distributed the ball well. He's been looking for teammates. On the back tap, it's handled by Pate. Ahmad was telling us that Bill Jackson does not want these wild threes. That's how Seattle got back into the end of the first half. They're creeping back in right now because of Chicago's poor offense. Shrap with the post on move. Rebound kept alive by Kemp. And the save by Kemp. What a play! What ball control to fight off two balls, and that makes it a 9-0 run for the Sonics. The Bulls call for time. So the Sonics have come roaring back, down by as many as 17 they are now with an eight points. Well, it must be at that end of the floor because this is what Seattle was doing in the first half, not going for those loose balls and rebounds, and Luke Longley making just a couple of half-hearted efforts, and Sean Kemp showing that he just wanted that basketball more as the Sonics have regained the momentum and start to creep back into this ballgame. 9-0 run by Seattle. Sean Kemp with 16 points along with 10 rebounds and with 2.49 to go in this third quarter. It is an eight-point game. Well, Chicago took Dennis Rodman out when Rodman was, had, had control of the game. He was on the offensive glass. He was making nice passes. The Bulls were running. They put him on the bench. And now Seattle back right in it. And Sean Kemp working his way on the offensive glass. And Dennis Rodman, all he can do is stretch. He, he has to learn that trick about substituting yourself, I guess. Well, the Bulls misfiring on their last five shots. No field goals the last three minutes and, and 45 seconds. A rare drought for Chicago. They've played exceptionally well here tonight. Well, we have seen the last couple of games with the Chicago Bulls. Now, it was on the road in a very tough building to play where the crowd was just huge as far as the inspirational impetus that they gave the Sonics, but we saw Chicago get tired. We saw Michael Jordan get tired, and right now, mid, almost with, the, with 2.49 to go in the third quarter, Chicago just walking through their offense, loping, not sharp with their passes and not sharp with their cuts, and it is killing them. It goes right back to what Hannah talked about at the very start of the game, about Seattle's hope being based on Chicago's inability to play a full 48. Peyton very quiet in the first half. Peyton has come back strong. He's got eight points here in the third, along with six assists. Magnificent third quarter for Gary Payton, but they're still down nine. The, the crowd here has been put back in their seats. Bill Jackson will rest Michael Jordan. Rodman is back on the floor. Good coach Pippen, Hopper, and Kerr. Rodman setting the screen. Cool coach in a battle with Perkins. Shot clock at seven. Here's Kerr over Perkins. Yes! A three for Steve Kerr. Who was three of 20 from downtown in the series prior to that shot. Oh, no way he could see the basket. He was totally covered. He just had to launch. They bring Rodman back in, and he shuts down Kemp right away. Coming up on two minutes remaining 
in the third quarter. He sent it to Pippen. And back comes Payton. Here's Kemp. Sean Kemp has mastered that shot. It appears he's about to put it on the floor and drive to the basket, but he has that nice little pull-up now. Well, this situation with Chicago struggling, you'd say, why would Phil Jackson take Michael Jordan down? First of all, it's normally when he comes out of the game, late in the third quarter, but also Phil likes to show the confidence in the other players that they can stem the tide. And yet another travel on the Bulls. That's the fifth time they have been called for steps. But it's been when Jordan's on the bench this entire series that Seattle has made their great his runs, particularly in this building, in the two games out there that Seattle won, it didn't matter that Jordan was on the court, Seattle spanked him anyway. Minute 25 remaining, third quarter, Sonics down by nine, Payton putting moves on Hopper, did not find the shot, shot clock at four, Payton from deep, forced into a difficult shot. Great rebounding job by Scotty Pippen, who throughout this series, despite his shooting problems, has played the other parts of the game. Offer rejected by Kent. Kept alive, though. Offer, trying to back to three-point territory. Shot clock is down to five. Two coach. Pippen. Traveling. What is going on here? That's a good call, Scotty. Stepped into his shot. He didn't deliver it. Again, the, the, the hesitation that Scotty has, the shooting, both teams dead even, the score is not a nine-point lead, Scotty needs to attack, be more of a leader when Michael's on the bench. And Sir Askew, who was benched the last two games, seeing some action here, but not happy with his play, and he goes right to the offense, Rodman with the rebound, everything one-on-one -on -one for Seattle. If you're going to go one-on-one, -on -one, go one-on-one -on -one with Peyton. Go one-on-one -on -one with Kemp. And move off of them. Everybody's standing around watching. 15 seconds to the quarter. Four-second differential with the shot clock. Pippen. Down to five seconds. Look out. Kerr going for the steal. Peyton. Finding Hawkins for three. The ball, 67. Sonics, 58. Kemp, 8 of 16 for his 18 points. Jordan not shooting well, 5 of 14 for 20 points. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Well, the Bulls are pulling out all the stops to get this crowd going. These are some things we haven't heard in the past. In fact, I knew they were serious about getting the crowd into it when we heard the rendition of Macho Man from the Village People <laughs> in the first quarter. Now, that's early. Very early. Normally a second half. Well, but Bob Couches was talking about it at the very start of the show, how this is the Chicago Bulls fans' opportunity. It's the only chance this year where they've really had a, an opportunity to be a factor. Randy Brown has come on for the start of the fourth quarter. Michael Jordan is back. The shot clock rolling down. It's, it's at five. Two coach four Five men with the rebound and foul by Kemp. For Kemp, it is number four. Well, in the fourth quarter of game five out of Seattle, George Carl the Sonics went to hard double teaming of Michael Jordan and took the Bulls totally out of their offense. They did it on this occasion as well, but when you double team, you are vulnerable on the offensive glass. Rodman's got his rhythm, though. 19 attempts for rebounds. He pulled it in 13 times. That's a phenomenal percentage. Here's Brown for three. And chased down by Rodman, beating Askew to the loose ball. Dennis is just out hustling. He was a non-factor late in the week in Seattle. Today, beautiful. A little reminder of game two. A lot of offensive rebounds, no scores. Holding on to the game by time of possession. Shot clock at five. Two coach for three. First three quarters, so the Bulls are hitting the threes. It's been a factor after the terrible time they had in Seattle on Friday. It's their sixth from downtown, six 
of 16. And they back it up. Here's Payton. Yes. Gary Payton with 17. The Bulls 70. The Sonics 61 with a minute and a half gone by in the fourth. Mark. Seattle's doing a really good job of getting the ball in Peyton and Kemp's hands much better than they've done in their earlier defeats. Jordan. Pulls for time. Oh, he took on Kersit from the crowd as he came up with the save and took the timeout. Well, the most important thing on defense, if you can get the other team to miss a shot, you've got to get the rebound. Timeout taken. We'll be back at the United Center in just a moment. Where great taste runs in the family brings you Miller Moments. Tonight's Miller Moment takes us back to the 93 NBA Finals, Game 6. And the Bulls trail the Suns by two in the final seconds when John Paxson hit that clutch three-pointer to give Chicago the lead. The Suns had one last chance, but Kevin Johnson's shot blocked by Horace Grant, and the Bulls became the first team in 27 years to win three consecutive NBA titles. And that was done also on Father's Day back in 93. In recognition of that moment, Miller Brown Company will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. There's John, now an assistant coach, his first year as an assistant with the Bulls after serving as color commentator for the Bulls. His club shooting made him a major contributor to the Bulls' three NBA championship teams. Two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. Chicago with the ball. They're up by nine. And here is Jordan coming up short, but he drew the foul. Oh, he wanted that off the spin. His shooting's been off. He's 5 or 15. He's 9 of 10 at the line, and he'll go back to the line after that foul by Shrimp. Matt mentioned earlier about the great ones when the game's not happening from the perimeter get to the foul line Looked like he was going to clear out a little bit with the stiff arm left But he just dangled it out there and Detlef came in and hammered him uh, it's Such a difficult cover for Vincent Askew to begin with He has been buried so deep in the doghouse hadn't played in the last couple of games And now even though he has been able to play Jordan in other situations just looks very rusty out there and with this lineup for Seattle Chicago's going to be able to get to the hoop, and nobody's going to be able to keep Rodman off the board. And there is Juanita Jordan, rooting her husband, and the ball's on. They now have an 11-point lead, 9.50 to go in this fourth quarter. The pass is off the line. Terrible pass, Jetler Shrimp. Randy Brown for Tony Kuko. Scotty Pippen played by Hersey Hawkins. Hawkins been very quiet here tonight after the two solid games. Look out. That's headed out of the way. Brown tried to save it. And he was fouled by Pippen. I was yeah, that, that was your ball. We were waiting to see Mark. <laughs> did not know whether to go left. Did not know whether to go right. But really a poor decision on the part of Randy Brown in what amounted to an outlet pass and starting that little fast break play for Gary Payton. Bill, you mentioned, excuse me, Bill, you mentioned before what a bad pass by Detlef Shrimp, and the reason why it was so bad is Gary Payton took his eye off the passer, Detlef Shrimp, and you should never make a pass to a man unless he's looking at it, to give the target, and ready to catch it. Well, that was your excuse for not feeding Wilt all the time, right? That Wilt wasn't looking. If I didn't feed Wilt, I was on the bench, front of <laughs> Sonics have not spent much time at the line. They're now 7 of 8 from the line. The Bulls 14 of 18. Bulls lead 72, 63. Steve Kerr is back. It's Kerr and Jordan with Pippen, Rodman, and Kukoc on the front line. with some few shots has hit his last two from downtown. And a foul, a hold, called on Rodman. For Rodman, his third. Rodman working the triple post. You see the action away from the ball. The antithesis of what Seattle does. The split on the ball side, the screen down on the weak side. Everybody involved for the Chicago Bulls. Bill Wellington enjoying the moment. 
Dennis Rodman now, 14 rebounds, along with nine points and four assists. possession. He's the playmaker. He's the creator on this team. All right, Askew sitting down. Perkins is back with Shrimp and Kemp up front. Peyton and Hawkins at the guards. Kemp and Robert trying to draw the foul. Perkins to the ring. Again, comes up short. Sam Perkins. One, a two for ten from the field. Well, the Chicago Bulls have gotten a couple of major breaks there. A wide open look for Hawkins, and then another one there for Perkins to try to get Seattle back into the game. They just cannot make their three-point shots. Shot clock at two. Kuko clearing away now. And a foul on Brown, making contact with Shrimp. Of course, Scotty's been all over the court, Scotty Pippen tonight, in so many different ways. He ran down that last loose ball, but when he gets the ball against Devlin Shrimp and Hershey Hawkins, he is not blasting by those guys. There's no way that Shrimp and Hawkins can even stay in the same gym with Scotty Pippen on the defensive end. Ron Hopper getting set to return. Bulls now have 14 fouls. Sonics with just two. Shrimp pulling the hook shot out of the repertoire. But Rodman is taking over. He knows where every ball is going. I'm dumping it into the low post. Now let him run the triple post. Rodman has 16 rebounds. Jordan. Rodman and Perkins. In the battle, it is called a jump ball. Well, Jordan upset. He thought there should have been a foul on the Sonics, but they'll jump it up when we come back. 6.58 to go in the fourth. Great to keep shooting. But do it. Carl told him. On this Father's Day, Michael Jordan certainly has a host of emotional memories. His, his dad, James, a regular at Bulls games, very close to his uh, son, murdered three years ago. We asked Michael for his thoughts on his dad. My father's not here, but yet I have to give tribute in whatever way you know, I can in faith and in spirit. Um, but I think what's the blessing of, of today is, is, is to be able to wake up and, and see your kids come in and say happy Father's Day. I mean, that's that's the transcending of, of your father to you and to your to your kids, and I think that that lessens some of the you know, emotional things that I had to go through for today. And uh, I'm looking forward to to going out and playing hard, and knowing that you know uh, I'm doing what I can to try to make him proud and make my family, my wife, my kids proud, and put forth the effort. And whatever happens from that point, you know, it's, it's meant to be or not. So special that relationship with your dad. I know my dad is watching today, and he's still driving that MVP truck that I got 20 years ago. <laughs> and a standing ovation again from this Chicago crowd. They want to see the championship celebration tonight. The Sonics, only one of six for the field, and the fourth quarter, oh, Pippen with the save. It is Chicago ball with 6.50 remaining in the fourth, and the Bulls leading 75 to 63. Open shot for Pippen. Pippen able to scoop it up. Second shot, the story of this game, and it's why the Chicago Bulls are in the position they are right now. 
Dennis Rodman does most of that damage for Chicago, but the rest of the team does very well because of all of his activity. So he ends that uh, streak that you just saw, and the Bulls now lead 77-65. Shrimp with 17. The Seattle Barb has not been a terrific comeback team in these playoffs. When they played as the leader, they've been super. Oh, Dennis Rodman with the one-hand rebound for his 17th, and he threw the foul, number five, on Kemp. Oh, Dennis Rodman. Unbelievable how he works and has a nose and has a feel for where shots are going to come. And Seattle just cannot get a body on him. Just under six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. To Jordan. Oh, the ball fake. <laughs> we saw that in the Orlando series, but Michael this time did not take it to the basket. Just setting it up. And an offensive foul is called. <laughs> and for Michael, his second. Now, Michael does have a tendency to use that off arm to wipe out the defender to get an advantage and just ever so slightly just wipes at the hand of the defensive man. You get the idea, he wants to do something that will get this crowd to explode. Perkins for three. Sam Perkins, two of 11 from the field. Our Chicago so fundamentally sound. They box out magnificently. It's not a big team. Walk is not a great defensive team. That's a heat check. He knows he's got the rhythm. He said, why not? Just under five minutes. And Sam again not able to hit and trip it off the boards. Chicago with a 47-31 advantage on the board. Only is fouled. Good lead. And Luke Longley is headed to the line. Well, that last sequence of fast breaks for Chicago, Sean Kemp is begging for the ball. We got Sam Perkins, everybody else casting off a three. They can't even get their star player the ball. Standing ovation from this crowd at the United Center. And Sean Kemp, I think, very, very tired and frustrated that he could not get the basketball late getting back. And that really put Seattle in a major hole. Looking over to the bench saying, hey, get me out. I want the ball. I don't know what's going on at this point. I don't think he's asking to come out. I think he said, get, get me some shots here. Talked about a lead of 25. He didn't get close to that. But what a magnificent series it has been. For Sean Kemp, took over Game 7 against Utah and has played so well against the uh, Chicago Bulls, which has uh, led to uh, much discussion around the country. You see it written, you see it talked about on the airwaves that what a shame that Sean Kemp did not make the green team at the Olympics. Well, very possible that he might replace Scottie Pippen, who, who I don't think should play in the Olympics because of these problems that he's got health-wise. But I'm told, Bill, that Pippen says no matter what, he'll be there. He's playing even if it's uh, in a limited role. I know the Bulls would like to see him sit it out for a while. Dennis Rodman receiving an ovation as he sits down with 18 rebounds. And again, 11 on the offensive boards to equal an NBA Finals record. He tied it back in game two, the record that is held by Elvin Hayes of the 
Washington Bullets. So Dennis is in the record books twice for the 11 offensive ball. Bulls lead 79, 66. We come up on four minutes to go. Fourth quarter, Harper was looking for the alley-oop. Last touch by Seattle. Well, Chicago was having problems late in the third quarter with their offense. It was stagnant, nobody moving, and the ball not being passed very well. They came out of this fourth quarter and spread the floor more, and they got more space to run. They got better spacing on their passes. Got clock at five. Pippen. Pavetta blowing the whistle and apparently indicating a foul call away from the ball. The basket counts and a double foul on Wingate and Jordan. A lot of action underneath the boards. Just a lock up there. No need to call that. It's just two tough competitors going head to head. Let the game be played by players. Chicago Bulls seeking their fourth NBA title the last six years. Only in 1992 against Portland did they have the uh, trophy presentation on their court. Pippen and rebounded by Perkins. They won their first championship in Los Angeles against the Lakers in 1991. They won their third title against the Sox. Not looking for a travel. Perkins, Sam Perkins, who has had a very difficult time of it, 3 of 13 from the field, he now has 7 points, and the Bulls lead 82-68. Far for Chicago, just keep moving, push yourself through the fatigue, a couple more baskets will probably be all they'll need to get that championship. Here's For the miserable time he had the previous five games, three for three tonight for seven points, and the Bulls now lead 84-68, just under three minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Pass from Brett was thrown away, Hawkins could not get to it, and a timeout is being called. 2.44 remaining in the fourth, we'll be back in Chicago in a moment. 2.44 remaining in the fourth quarter, and the Bulls appear to be on their way to a fourth title. And following tonight's Game 6, we will have full post-game coverage, the presentation of the Larry O'Brien Championship Trophy and extensive interviews with the Bulls. And, and following our broadcast, a special episode of Mad About You. A nice way to wrap up Father's Day. So for the Bulls, what appears to be the completion of what has been a magnificent season. But with the two losses to Seattle, did it cost them a piece of NBA history in terms of, of perception? The comparison has gone from greatest team of all time possibilities to are they the greatest Bulls team of the 90s? Or are they still one of the great teams in the history? Michael Jordan has not been able to find the cut. And Steve Kerr keeps it alive with 2.20 remaining in the fourth. Marv, I think they're absolutely one of the greatest either. I don't think those two losses mean anything. Nobody remembers what the spread was in the series. As long as they win, that's what counts. They've delivered all year long. Now down to the 16 point. with his 19th rebound. The only question is, will he break the NBA Finals record for offensive rebound? Standing ovation for the Chicago Bulls. Curl. And back comes Hawkins with 125 to go. Shrek. Wingate. And the Bulls now lead 84 to 7. Trophy presentation will take place on the floor here at the United Center. The
Michael Jordan comeback will be complete. Here is Jordan kicking it out. Pippen. We are just under one minute remaining. And the Bulls will have won their fourth title. For the Sonics, a season that saw them win 64 games, answer their critics by getting to the NBA Finals. They have the same people wondering over the first three games, but they came back in glorious fashion to force the sixth game. And they are now down to the final 21 seconds of this 1995-96 season. Well, Chicago Stadium, the old building, one of the loudest in all of sport. The United Center, I think, has finally come of age. They have reached the level with this crowd, and they've played a major part in this victory tonight. Well, Eric Snow walks it up with time running out. Down to 10 seconds. A three-pointer for Trent. 87, 75, and we're in the final second. The Chicago Bulls have won the 95-96 NBA championship. Make it four in six years as they defeat the Sonics 87 to 75. And they are going wild in the Windy City. a few moments and I, I would think there is a tie-in with his late dad on this Father's Day 1996. We'll be back with more from Chicago as the celebration continues. Back in a moment. To this year's Olympic Games. Me, Akim Olajuwon, and the rest of the American Dream Team are going to treat these guys for lunch. We said we're going to eat these guys for lunch. Not treat. Whoops. So, Akim, when you need a world of purchase power, it's time to go for the gold. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. Well, the celebration continues here at the United Center. The Bulls wrapping up the series in six games by 
defeating the Sonics 87 to 75. Michael George, the high man with 22. Scotty Pippen came roaring back from the earlier disappointment. 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists. Michael Jordan averaged slightly over 27 per game for the series, which is under his norm, but also five rebounds and four assists. Dennis Rodman finishing very strong with 19 rebounds. And the crowd reacting to the four-time champion, Chicago Bulls. We'll be back with more in a moment. But first, these messages from the legislature. New Miller Beer, proud sponsor of the NBA, salutes the Chicago Bulls on their fourth NBA championship of the 90s. New Miller Beer, reach for what's out there. your attention to center court for the presentation of the Larry O'Brien NBA Championship Trophy. Here's NBC's Bob Custis. For the fourth time in six years, the Chicago Bulls are world champions. We'll hear from most of the players momentarily, but surrounding me here, Commissioner David Stern will make the presentation. The owner, Jerry Reinsdorf, We'll hear from Phil Jackson momentarily. There he is towering above us. Jerry Krause, whose moves have been about as shrewd as anybody in sports over the last several years. Every player on this roster, save Michael Jordan, acquired by this man. And for the presentation of the trophy, the Commissioner David Stern. Your 72 wins, an NBA record, and this championship placed the Chicago Bulls among the storied teams in NBA and sports history. Along the way, you and the Sonics treated the world to NBA basketball at its best. Thank you for that. Congratulations to the fans of Chicago, the organization, and the four-time NBA champion, Chicago Bulls. I know it's hard to separate one from another, but this one certainly was different. This was different. This was a fairy tale year. 87 wins out of 100 games played. Every single man on this team contributed to this championship. Great players, led by the greatest player that ever played this game. The greatest coach in the league. But, but more, if you had to give credit to one man, the guy that put them all here, Jerry Krause. Jerry, I heard you say on one occasion that had Michael remained, the 93 team might have been the best of all, but this one will do. It's a great, great group, and this win today was so great because everybody contributed. There wasn't a guy on this roster that didn't contribute today. I'm so proud of them. Jerry, congratulations. And now to Phil Jackson. After the two losses in Seattle, was there even a tinge of worry coming in tonight? We were never worried. We had these people to come home to, home crowd. That's right. Old Cookin. We knew he'd win it right here. You've been around the game a long time. You've played with a storied team in the Knicks of the early 70s. You've coached four world champions. But this season was different than any other in NBA history, and the expectations were very high. Nothing but a championship would have sufficed. You're right. The championship was placed on our heads the first day of camp. Dennis Robb, in addition to our basketball club, we've had a wonderful time doing it. It's been a joyful ride. The atmosphere in this building speaks for itself. We don't want to put a damper on it in any way, but this is a question that has to be asked. Do you expect to be back here as you go for two in a row and five overall next year? They want me back. If the management wants me back, I'll come back. It's got to be right. It'll be right. And now let's go to Ahmad Rashad, who's with Michael Jordan. All right. All right. Thanks, Bob. Michael, I know that the first one was sweet, but how much sweeter was this one? Well, you know, this, I can't even put it in words. 
My father does what it means to me. I know he's watching. To my wife, to my, my kids, to my mother, my brothers and sisters. This is my daddy. I'm very happy for him. Now you had said, Michael, that of all the accomplishments that you've made, that this may be the accomplishment. Why? Well, this goes right up there to having my kids. My kids are the most important things to me, my wife, my family. But next to them, this is going to mean a lot to me because of what, what it symbolizes, which is my father on Father's Day. It means a very lot. It means a big deal to me. Now you remember just a couple of years ago that early flight to Indiana, where it all started. Now all of a sudden, it looks like this is a culmination. It's been a long road. You know, it started from scratch. You know, I had a lot of support from my teammates, from my family. I'm just happy for the city of Chicago. I'm sorry I was out for 18 months, but I'm happy I'm back to bring a championship back to Chicago. I know this is what you're pointing for, but as we look back at the baseball, we were talking the other day that you've almost forgotten about that. Seems like years ago. I haven't truly forgot it. You know, those minor leaguers meant a lot to me. They really got me back on the road of thinking basketball. They showed me the genuine attitude that you have when you're playing a sport that you truly love. So I give a lot of gratification to the minor league organization, the White Sox organization, for, for giving me that inspiration. But it's always great to come back and play in Chicago. All right, Michael, congratulations to you on a great year and way to bring it to a win. Thank you very much. All right, let's go over to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. I'm here with Dennis Rodman. They're chanting your name now, Rodman. Rodman, did you simply impose your will there in the third quarter with all those rebounds and five points? Well, <laughs> well I just, I just think, uh, say one thing. I just thank Chicago for having me in the city, and uh, and um, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people never gave me any credit to to be in this situation where I am today. But I proved them all wrong again, so, you know. Did you have some doubts? Did you think maybe, Dennis, this wouldn't work out as well as it has? No, you know, I just, you know, I'm just happy to be here with somebody, with a city that likes to see someone work their ass off. And, uh, you, know, you know, I just like to give back to the people. Everybody wants to know about next year. There's been some questions. Do you feel as though you're going to be back here next year? I don't know. It's just up to the, I promised the people one thing, and I think I did it tonight. I hope that's what they want. You know. What did Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and the guys say to you after you guys lost in Game 5? They specifically had some words for you. What were they? No, you know, the referees seem to have a tendency to pick on somebody that's totally different. But I say screw them. You know, so, <laughs> you know, so, you know, it, you know, I like to go out there and do what I have to do to, uh, to win a ball game. If they don't like me, they're going to see me for the next three or four years in the league, baby. Congratulations. See you, Dennis. Your third championship. Let's go over to Marv Albert. All right, Jim, Dennis obviously confused. He thought it's the CNBC cable postgame <laughs> show. So the Chicago Bulls with a record-breaking 72 wins in the regular season. In the playoffs, they sweep Miami. They beat the Knicks in five. They sweep Orlando. And they take the Sonics in six for their fourth championship the last six years. Back with Scotty Pippen in a moment. Welcome back to Chicago. Poignant moments for Michael Jordan and his family as the celebration continues here at the United Center. The Bulls over the Sonics to take the series in six and one of the Chicago heroes this evening, Scottie Pippen, who bounced back with a very solid game. He's with Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad. All right, thanks, Mark. I'm here with Ron Harper and Scottie Pippen. And Ron, first of all, you played, you had the bad leg and everything, but you gave it all tonight. What a big difference you made. Man, I'm, I'm just happy to get this series over with. Uh, me and my teammates came out tonight and we knew the job that we had to do. And this goes out to all our fans and all our family in Chicago and we're all over the world. How to my son, how to everybody out there. And I love you, man. I love you, too, man. You, man. <laughs> all right, Scotty. You've been battling injuries all year and taking a little heat in the last couple of games, but tonight you came out and had it all together. The last four months, you mean. <laughs> the last four months. <laughs> but you know, I, I had to stick with it, Ahmad. Uh, our basketball team, this guy's been dedicated to coming out and winning. We've been very focused all season. We won 72 games. Scott came out and played hurt, played injured. So I knew I had to dedicate myself to finish this season off strong because I felt very positive about our ball club. And Ron did a great job of coming out, giving us the lift that we needed today because he's injured. Now you have been around all four championships. Can you compare 
compare this one to the other three? Well, this is great because our basketball team was so focused this season. We went out and we tried to win every basketball game that we faced. And to make this season more special, we felt like we had to win an NBA title. And these, these guys really deserve it. What about you personally? You've battled all these injuries. You've got the dream team coming up. Will that? Will the injuries have any effect when you hey, compete well, in the Olympics? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think I'll be as valuable to the Olympic team with those great players that they have on their basketball team as we have here at the Chicago Bulls. So uh, if they can live in my, my minutes, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing them all. I'm dedicated to going and playing throughout the Olympics, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, congratulations, you guys, on a great year. Thanks, Ahmad. All right, thanks. let's go down to Hannah Storm. Okay, thanks, Ahmad. I'm here with Sonny's coach at George Carl, who's gracious enough to join us. What did you tell your team afterwards? Well, there's, a, there's seasons in basketball that you can be proud of, and there's a specialness to this year's team, and I think a lot of things that we've done. I think there's also a lot of pain in our locker room because, you know, we know we, we didn't give it our best shot in a couple games in this series, and we, we just never could play well on this court. Uh, I can't, can't, my heart, our team's heart was very big, and I think they showed a lot of pride. But, you know, we just didn't shoot the ball or pass the ball or rebound the ball well enough uh, to beat Chicago on their own court. What was the difference here on their court? Was it their experience? I think energy and experience has come to mind right away. You know, it seems like it, since game three, the team that had the energy, that had the extra bounce, was one, winning the games. And we had it in game four and five, and they had it in game three. And tonight, I thought, you know, their bounce on the rebounding was unbelievable. But I also think the experience, you know, we, we kind of we got frustrated at times in this building and, and gave them minutes where we didn't play our best basketball. How will history treat the Chicago Bulls, who came into this series? A lot of people theorize they were one of the greatest teams ever. Did you destroy that theory by making it a series and making it difficult on them? Uh, they're a great basketball team and I, I think you know that shows with three all defensive players you probably got the MVP and Michael Jordan you got probably the best all-around player in Scotty Pippen you got the best six-man award in Tony Kukoc you got a great coaching staff and it was led by Phil Jackson so I think they got to be in the top three or four but as I said to my team I said we showed that we were close to them and I think I think with an experience and the growth that can happen this team will be back fighting for the championship again. Okay, George, thanks very much for joining us. Yeah. Great effort by your team coming back from 3-0. Well, let's send it back out on the court. All right, thank you, Hannah. And Seattle with their first trip to the NBA Finals since they won the championship in 1979. A 64 regular season, 64 win regular season scenario for the Sonics in the playoffs. They beat Sacramento, swept Houston, beat Utah in a grueling seven-game set, and then came back against the Bulls but lost in six. We'll be right back record for the season 87 wins and 13 losses including the playoffs tonight game number 100 there is symmetry in that as we conclude this NBA regular season the chairman of the Chicago Bulls is Jerry Reinsdorf many questions will be facing Jerry in this offseason and he is with our Jim Gray all right, thank you very much, Marv. There are an awful lot of questions for Jerry Reinsdorf, but the main ones are, will Rodman, Jordan, and Phil Jackson all be back next year? Well, right now, I just want to enjoy the moment, the celebration that's going on here, and the visit that we have to Grand Park, and then we'll worry about those things later. Right now, all I want to think about is what this team accomplished and what an incredible job that Jerry Krause did in putting together a team of players that anybody else could have had, many of whom nobody wanted. What would be the reason for any one of the three not returning? Look, we want everybody back, but who knows? Life is funny. I don't even want to think about problems right now. I'm having such a good time now, I don't want to think about any bad things. Do you expect it will be a problem with any of the three? I don't want to have any problems. I hope there are no problems. I hope we have them all back. But we'll deal with that when the time comes. Tonight is a night of celebration for this great city and for our fabulous organization. Jerry, thanks for taking the time with us. Let's go back to Barb Albert. All right, thank you, Jim. And I'm uh, here with my cohorts, Bill Walton and Matt Gukas. Final thoughts on this 95-96 uh, edition of the Chicago Bulls. Where is their place in history, Bill? Right at the top, along with a number of other teams who all believe that they're the greatest team. But what was so impressive about the Bulls this year 
was the way they did it with style, dignity, and, and the pride and hard work ethic of Michael Jordan. And obviously, very emotional for Michael Jordan. Well, you could see it all building up in Michael after coming back and going through the disappointments of last year and then bouncing back and leading his team to just a storybook season. All right, let's join with Bob Costas back upstairs. Bob? All right, Mark, terrific job as always. Before some final comments on the Bulls championship, a programming note coming up here on NBC. We have a special episode. And that will be followed by your late local news. And so tonight, it's official. The Chicago Bulls have done it. And the fact that the expected took a bit longer than expected makes their achievement no less remarkable. As the celebration, peaceful we hope, begins in Chicago, the debate that will never end heats up. Are the Bulls the best ever? Their two losses in Seattle might have weakened their case a little, but tonight's resounding clincher restores most of the luster. In terms of public perception, these Bulls probably will be regarded as the best because their undeniable greatness is combined with the marketing machine of the modern NBA. And because they were already America's basketball team due to their past successes and the presence of Michael Jordan. Does that mean the Bulls rank above Russell and Chamberlain's best, ahead of the Knicks and Bucks of the early 70s, the Lakers, Celtics, and Sixers of the 80s? Not necessarily, but their case is as strong as any of the teams on the short list of the league's best. In a way, it's a shame that through no fault of their own, the Bulls had no truly great opponent to test themselves against. The Sonics certainly impressed toward the end of this series, but the Bulls still had no equal or near equal to do for them what the Celtics and Lakers did for each other, to help define them as Frazier did for Ali. But you can only play what's out there, and the Bulls outdistance their competition as no other team ever has. And while purists may have legitimate gripes about the modern NBA, they have no quarrel with these Bulls, because on the court, this is a team rooted in the game's timeless verities. Excellent defensively, poised and resourceful, their offense designed by 72-year-old Tex Winter, employing principles he first laid out more than 40 years ago. Their head coach, a protege of Red Holzman, his basketball philosophy shaped by the selfless Nick teams of the 1970s. And most significantly, there is Michael Jordan. No one is hyped or marketed more than he. But at the same time, no one is more the genuine article than he. His artistry is breathtaking. But his competitiveness and commitment, his true regard for the game, are what bring the nods of respect and appreciation from those who've been around the NBA for decades. So take whatever side you wish in the greatest ever debate, but appreciate what you've seen tonight and all season long. A unique team has fulfilled its destiny, and the transcendent team sport athlete of our time has done what seemed impossible. This season has added to his legend. As our elders told us of having seen Ruth and DiMaggio, Joe Lewis and Jesse Owens, we will someday tell our children and grandchildren that we were lucky enough to watch Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. For all of us at NBC Sports, good night from Chicago.